I think you already know this from a couple of notes that we exchanged, but I've read your book twice. And most recently, I read that book to, to prepare for this interview with you. And one of the things that you know stood out for me that I'd love to have you explain and define for our listeners is this concept of bonding or bonded groups versus bridging. And I think a lot of people that are listening who are ERG leaders are going to immediately recognize how that ties back to the groups that they have. It very much ties into the whole purpose of ERGs and, and the reason that ERGs can provide such an incredible uh, service to organizations. And these are distinctions, by the way, I want to just acknowledge. These are distinctions that come from the work of the brilliant Harvard sociologist, Robert Putnam, who has, I think, for years been one of our leading academics relative to researching social capital and the way that people engage. And back in, I think it was around 1999 or 2000, when he wrote his book, Bowling Alone, and he identified these two different ways that human beings tend to, to group with each other or, or connect with each other uh, socially. One of the bonded groups. And bonded groups tend to be groups that we co-identify with. In some cases, that can be our family, if we're lucky, if we're fortunate enough to have a family in which people really support each other. And, and we all know that's not always the case. Sometimes it can be an identity. So for example, I often use the example of when African-Americans meet each other on the street, the nod that they often give to each other. It's a little bit like we're in this together. The sense that what happens to you is likely to happen to me or could very well happen to me or affects what happens to me because we are co-identified. It could be a religion. It could even be something like a, a deep personal bond of relationship has been created over an extended period of time. So for example, I have a friend who has a group of um, people who went to college with, and he's our age, Joe, and yet for 50 years, every year they get together and spend a week together, no matter where they are. And he said to me, that's the most bonded relationship in my life. He said, they know me from way before I was anything, and they know my BS. So they'll call me out on my BS. Nobody else will. And no matter what I do, they're going to love me. So it's those kind of relationships that you fall back into, those bonded relationships that sort of help to find who we are and are the, the, the strongest and most grounded and safest relationships in our life. But then we also have relationships where we bridge across those differences, where we bridge across the differences of family, of race, of identity, or whatever else. And, and we create relationships with people that can also be very sustaining. They're bridging relationships. And, and these bridging relationships are so important because that's how our social capital expands beyond our group. Now, the challenge is that we can either have bonding and bridging for positive reasons or for negative reasons. And historically, those bonded relationships for positive reasons, very healthy. We pulled, the ERG is a very great example of a healthy bonded relationship. We pull together a group of people who have a common interest, they have a common identity. They see the world in a particular framework from that reference, and they come together to support each other, to share ideas, to move things through the organization and to contribute to the organization from that particular identity. But we know if all we do is continue to have that, then we're gonna have tribes within our organization, clans of this person and this person. So it's the relationship between those that really expands that beyond our particular identity. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense.